Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. It is January 14th and it's been uh, quite a while since I last recorded, about two weeks. So I'm a little bit rusty, but my office is put back together so I can finally start recording some stuff again. So where we left off, we were trying to get dollars text field to uh, operate on dollars rather than just text. And I was trying to get this line right here, or this test to pass, and I did get it to pass by using the currency instance off of number format, um, but then that caused this to break. Um, now ultimately I did a spike that you know I think is the proper approach for this, I think, but I definitely feel like in the last video when I was recording it wasn't it wasn't going smoothly, and I think that was because I was trying to bite off too big a piece of a piece. So what I want to do is actually sneak up on this problem a little bit differently, take it a little bit more slowly, a little easier, and then I can refactor into the correct, what I think right now is the correct solution. So that's what I'm thinking right now. Um, so the problem is this parsing, and you know it's actually quite easy to parse this, this stuff if I don't worry too much about using the built-in Java libraries. If I just go straight for what I know will work, um, I'm pretty sure I can just do this. So let's let's see things go right now. Okay, so I'm going to return a null out of there. Okay, so we have the appropriate exception. Um, I've turned this one off for now. Just need to see that we're getting thousand twenty four dollars out when I say set the field to a thousand twenty four so that should be pretty easy uh, it's just a matter of parsing that integer okay Okay, so that kind of worked. Um, that's interesting. Well, now what I'm going to do is just strip off that dollar sign. And this is very hackish, um, but that's okay. Um, So we'll strip out that dollar sign, and now everything should work. No, it doesn't. Darn. All right, what's going on here? Well, that would be it. Okay. So now this should test should work. So what we're missing here is the robust um, robust string handling that we would otherwise get. Uh, so if I go in and I so now if I say, you know, dollar six six six, oh this isn't using the new dollars text field. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and hook that up. <clears throat> I 
Oh, it is using the, using the new dollars text field. So can I put that in without writing a new test around it? I think I can. Yeah, I think I can. That's an internal decision about how this is parsed. So I should be able to just say and that should still pass. And then it still works. But now what I want to do is actually take out the try catch because that shouldn't be handled here, that should be handled by field.get dollars. Which means we'll start seeing exceptions come out over here. So that's working just fine. If I put a dot in, yeah, that causes it to blow up. I guess the reason to um, put that try catch in here would be um, just so we could do some manual exploration a little more easily. Oh, now it's not. Okay, yeah. So, 45. Oh, I figured out uh, several videos ago I was couldn't understand why I could type in such large numbers, but it's because it was a double, not an int, or not a long, yeah, not an int. So, uh, and a double just has a larger tops, top end. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So in the, in the long break, I didn't think about this much, to be honest, but um, one thing I did think about was I'm really not sure if I want to use the formatted text field. Um, the formatted text field has a couple of things going for it, but in a lot of ways it's really complicated, and I like the, and it doesn't, doesn't support sort of the live changes that we're getting here, which I've actually come to like, um, and I, it, I don't think it would be too hard to do our own parsing here, so I'm, I want I'm going to pause the video and just double check and see what was happening with the formatted text field, but I actually think rolling it our own ourselves is going to be simpler. I mean, look how quickly I got this piece out. Now, granted, I'm not done, but, you know, there's, there's something to be said there. But I, I do have to say the other advantage of the formatted text field is it did make it fairly easy to go back and forth between having the string and the number. I don't know. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes to just think about that and look at it, and I will be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, you know, I don't think I like this formatted text field. For example, if I put in bad characters here and then tab away, it just, it blows them away, but it also doesn't, I mean, one four one six, comma 5466, um, well, that, that actually works. But if, for example, I put in this, what was what is that going to do? It's just going to erase silently my, my edits. What if I'm not really paying attention? Um, I do like it has like that it has the uh, multiple locale support, the internationalization. But you know what? That's not a key requirement for me right now. So I think I would actually be better off doing this myself. For example, I would love for there to be a little icon that shows up here, a little warning sign that shows up here when this is done improperly. And I can't do that uh, using this. I mean, I'd have to roll it myself. That combined with the fact that I'm finding it very difficult to to work with, um, that tells me that maybe I should be doing something else. So, and also I'm finding you know just doing this myself quite easy to do. So uh, I'm going to try that, and we'll see where it goes. I mean, I do sometimes tend to err on the side of build versus buy. Um, I like building because then you have a lot of control over it, you've got all the good tests, you know how it works and so forth. So I do tend to build more often than buy. Um, for me, the trade-off is if something's going to take more than a couple of days to build, then it's worth looking at and buying. 
But if it's going to be just, you know, saving an hour or two, you'll lose that time later. So um, this doesn't look like it's going to be too hard to build. So and so I think I'm going to build it, not buy it. And by buy it, I mean, you know, use a third party component. Um, I was willing to give that a shot, but it was just turning out to be complicated. And I like things to be simple and I like them to be easy. And this is looking easy. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, it'll be fun at least. <laughs> Maybe that's the real reason, you know. Um, let's see, we've got everything working. Yeah, so we can clear, don't need that. We're using, you know, we're actually not storing the dollars. We're just translating the text. Uh, I think the next thing to do, if we run this, if we erase everything, that causes a failure. In fact, let's make that a little more clear. Oops, wrong one. Yeah, boy, that better not stand at the final app. There's there's classic programmer uh, UI. Okay, so yeah, if I erase everything, bam, breaks. If I type in a dot, it breaks. If I type in bad characters, it breaks. Uh, if I type in, yeah. So, we could do better than that. I want to make that error message a little more distinct as I start piling them up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, let's see. So, what do I want to do next? Um, changing text changes dollar amount. Text reflects dollar amount upon construction. Now I think it's time to... Um, take care of the case when there's no value. Doesn't like that, that's for sure. Sort of a old school way of doing it. I wonder if they've got an is empty yet. Oh, they do. All right, there we go. So now if I erase things, I don't get an error. Lovely, lovely. Okay, uh, well that's all the time we have for this episode. Thanks very much for watching and I will catch you next time.